Hello ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Today we are going to make the mold for the PT maquette that we made. Now that we've been through the mold making process a couple of times, I'll focus less on the silicone portion of this mold. And instead I'll focus on how I decide on where to part the mold, which we haven't really talked that much about, what my thoughts are, what my tactics are, and how I envision it when I plan out the parting of the mold. And we'll focus on making a plaster mother mold which is also something we haven't talked about before. Plaster is the absolute best material for beginners learning how to make a mold. It's cheap, it's forgiving, and easy to work with and readily available to everyone. So let's get to it. However, we do first have to cover our, our sculpture with silicone. And I'll talk a little bit about it. I do two layers of sil silicone this time around. Normally I'll advise three layers, but, but since this sculpture is so small, I decided to see if two layers would work. And, and spoiler alert, it, it did work very well. The silicone I'm using is a paste silicone from a company called Blue Star. And the silicone is called Blue Sil RTV 3325P. The P stands for paste. Because it's paste, I apply it with my fingers, of course. First in a thin layer that, that gets close to being translucent in certain areas, but it's not that important, just make sure that it's pretty thin, and it's thin to avoid air bubbles. Then in a thicker second layer to build it up. I'm careful to make sure the layers are even everywhere, and that there isn't too much of a difference in the thickness of the silicone. If there's a difference in the thickness of the silicone, this can lead to, lead to strange problems, like uneven shrinking and or potentially ripping if the silicone has different strength is of different strength in different areas it's very important to to take care and make sure you don't ding your sculpture of course at this point if you ding your sculpture it's gonna get recorded in your mold because you apply this silicone with your hands this can easily happen so beware i mix small batches of silicone so i don't have to rush getting it on the figure even though i'm working I'm working pretty fast here all things considered. With two layers of silicone on the figure, and again I do recommend three layers of silicone usually, it's time to start planning out where to place the walls. The walls are where the silicone will be cut and where the mold will be split in half. It's also known as a parting line some places so not only is it where the two parts of the silicone will come apart, but it's also where the two pieces, or more pieces in some cases, of the plaster mother mold will come apart. Because of the way my armature is on the big version of the sculpture, which you can see here, I decided to part the mold in upper and lower halves. Now this is something that I do, I would do more on larger sculptures, so I don't end up with a gigantic mold. You know, you get an upper and a lower half, and they're a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, and you can attach the upper and lower half after they've been cast separately. You can see the armature coming into the hips here. And that's where I'm going to part the upper and lower part of the mold. It doesn't matter so much where I part this particular mold, because there is no armature sticking out of the hips, and it's pretty small. But doing it in this way also makes it a bit easier to cast because it's easier to get to my seams everywhere and make sure that they're filled. I mark where I'm going to build my silicone wall with a black marker. It's right above the waist around the hips area. It's not really that important in this case because there is no armature coming out of the hips. Once I've decided on this, I need to decide where the lower and upper half will themselves be parted into two. Always attempt to part your silicone in two not three, not four. Two is always easier and usually possible. In this case, it's, it's simple enough, so we're going for two. I want to part both legs down the middle. What I've done here to show you guys how to do this is I've turned the figure facing the camera. So you are watching right at, right now, you're watching straight on one side of the mold. To ensure I've made a good decision, I mark out the parting line with clay. This lets me visually observe the parting line from the front and the back. If one piece of clay disappears behind the horizon and I can't see it from either the front or the back, the wall needs to be moved until I can see it from both sides. It's a simple but effective little trick. If the piece of clay is misplaced and my wall ends up misplaced, the hard shell of the mother mold would lock 
over the round shape of the leg and the mother mold wouldn't come up. It would essentially dive behind the horizon of the shape, whatever shape it is, in this case the leg, and it wouldn't come up. So this parting line is going to work well about this in this place as it is right now. In addition to seeing the clay pieces from front and back, I have to make sure there are no undercuts on the surface. Undercuts are where the clay turns away, creating a valley on the surface of your mother mold. Essentially where your mother mold won't be able to come off your silicone because it dips again, dipping behind the horizon. It's a good way to think about it. If you have undercuts, you need to either fill them out with, with clay sometimes or silicone, or you can put the wall in a place to minimize the, the effect of the undercut. Sometimes several pieces of mother mold or a key is the only solution. In this case, it's fairly straightforward and I have no unreal undercuts. There's also less undercuts on smaller figures. Once I've marked where I put the clay with a black marker, I get rid of the clay. Then I do the upper half and it's a little different because it's twisted. Well, the lower half was twisted in relationship to the upper half. So the upper half is actually straightforward coming right at us while the lower legs were a little, the mother mold on the lower legs is going to end up being twisted. But this is okay because we've parted the upper and lower halves. And so it doesn't really matter. I can treat the top half separate from the lower half. I place the pieces of clay and make the marks permanent with a black marker. And again, just like with the lower half, you guys are looking straight at one side of the mold. This I think is a good time to mention Patreon. If you're interested in learning sculpture from me personally and get feedback on your work, either on email or via video chat, my Patreon page is the place for you. You'll get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Again, anything sculpture related goes. We can talk about armatures, supplies, mold making, anything you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. You'll get 25% off on my web store plus accumulated credits equal to the amount you pledge that can be used for further discounts. So check it out, patreon.com slash idacarnison. There's also a link in the description below. Then it becomes time to place the walls. The walls are first placed using pink catalyzer to speed up the setting time of the silicone. And this is just a, a cheap trick to make the process a little bit faster. I don't need to sit around and wait for the silicone to set up. The silicone is affected by gravity and so if it sets up faster there's less sagging of the wall. It doesn't sag so much and that means that I can just put it there and, and leave it. There's less chasing after it. Once the first round of silicone wall is placed, I can instantly start over again and keep building up a little bit of width and height in steps. I do two roughing in passes on the silicone wall with pink catalyzer and then I do the final beauty layer with yellow catalyzer. I make the walls as square as I possibly can and I try to make sure they come out 90 degrees to the silicone of the sculpture. This is not so easy to get perfect but I try as best as I can to get it as cl uh, get it close and if it's getting if it's close it's going to work out it's important that the silicone is smooth and doesn't have a lot of lumps and bumps because then the mother mold will grab onto those lumps and bumps which is not so good and creates weaker silicone essentially the walls come out 90 degrees or as close to 90 degrees as possible to the rest of the silicone to make registration with the plaster mother mold as easy as possible With the walls built, we are ready to proceed into plaster. Here I will not go in chronological order of what pieces were made, but more in order of operation. Each piece of plaster mother mold is the same and so in this sequence there will be cuts in between each piece. Just, just know that they're all the same and that I'm showing you each individual step at the same time. However, it's good to know that it's smart to start at the bottom because of, um, you know, gravity. So I usually start with one of the bottom pieces. Let's start off by vaselining the base and I do this to make sure the plaster doesn't stick to my base because I do create a bit of a mess doing this and it's very hard not to. And let's cover that little hole between the legs with a piece of clay. We don't want plaster in there. I'm not worried about how they register together 
the two plaster pieces as they meet in this hole but I just don't want plaster to to leak through and, and create a mess really okay time to mix some plaster you can use any plaster they all work fairly similarly this is just a regular cheap plaster of Paris it's natural nothing synthetic or fancy and it works well for a mold like this it's not the strongest but definitely not weak either plaster is fairly straightforward and easy to mix but there are some tricks to it start off with water cold water makes the plaster set up slower hot water will speed up the setting process and slowly pour the plaster in without stirring it pour a little at the time and let the plaster completely sink into the water each time you pour keep adding plaster until you get this little island of dry plaster then let it sit for a minute or two until your plaster island is no longer dry and looks more like a cracked riverbed then you can mix it it should mix if you've done all these steps correctly it should mix very smoothly and easily you can use your hands you can use a tool whatever you prefer you'll notice that I'm using gloves while working with plaster and that is just a couple of reasons it's winter here and my hands are quite dry and I have a tendency to, to pick at them a little bit so pick at the skin around the nail so I want to be a little bit careful and protect that and also because I'm operating a camera and so I want to be able to quickly rip off the gloves and get new angles and pull focus and all this sort of stuff first step of creating a plaster mother mold is to do a splash coat to capture the detail now you can skip this this splash coat a lot of people do but especially when they're just creating a mother mold but I like to do it this layer should be fairly thin but thick enough so that it's not translucent and it should cover the silicone evenly avoiding air bubbles and getting good coverage is key and also make sure that you that you wash your brush after doing this I have a I have a little splash bucket next to me which is just a bucket of, of water where I clean my brushes so that they don't dry out and that I can keep using them this entire mother mold was made using one brush and it's just a cheap brush from uh, the local Esalunga supermarket I let the splash coat set up it takes not a very long time it takes a few minutes until it's kind of dry to the touch uh, but before it heats up then it's time for reinforcement when I use plaster I use burlap as, re as reinforcement and if you don't know what burlap is it's kind of like if you envision Santa Claus and the, the sack that he carries his, his presents in it's kind of a loose weave that smells really pleasant we buy it in big rolls here at the school and it's probably available everywhere I imagine. Some places it's called yuta. Cut up, they've been already been pre-cut into small pieces. For a small mold like this one, I'll probably do two layers of burlap and I make sure that every single piece of burlap is overlapped. Start off with mixing more plastic. Then do another splash coat. This helps the burlap stick to the first layer a little bit so that the splash coat doesn't pull a ton of moisture out of the piece of burlap. Then dip the burlap in the plaster, squeeze out most of the plaster so the burlap is not soaked and plaster doesn't run anywhere. Then I use the brush to push the burlap down on my surface, making sure there are no air bubbles. Air bubbles will make the mold weak and prone to breaking. And the brush makes sure that I don't break the, the thin splash coat below the burlap. I make sure that my burlap doesn't get too close to the walls because if burlap starts sticking out when I start rasping the mold that's not so good I make sure that every piece of burlap overlaps the last one so that they're very very well connected imagine this is the strength of your mold and so it's important that this this step is done very well also using less plaster rather than more is not such a bad idea more plaster is not a stronger mold more layers of burlap and no air bubbles is a stronger mold
with the burlap step done everywhere, it's time to reinforce the walls. The edges of the mold are usually the first to break. This is where most pressure tends to be applied and so I'll make them stronger by creating a square plaster wall along the edges of the model mold where they bump up against the silicone. I build these plaster walls up next to my silicone wall and kind of square to them so that they match the height and match the angle as best as I can of course. It's plaster so it's a little bit of an inexact science. But I do try to work very cleanly. I, I add the plaster slowly, making sure that there's no air bubbles as I add it, making sure that I push the plaster well on there so that it's compact. And this just minimizes issues and breaking. As I clean the plaster up later, it's not going to crumble on me. The cleaner you work now, the less you'll have to rasp later. Then we have to rasp to clean up the mold. I believe this is a Stanley rasp, this yellow rasp, uh, but any rasp will do. This is obviously pretty straightforward. I take care that the plaster pieces don't, don't come off the silicone. Sometimes they can be worked loose during the rasping. So I use a light touch and keep in hand on the plaster piece, making sure they don't come apart. And again, I want my, it's mostly about the plaster mold and anywhere where I could cut my hands. So I try to make the plaster walls as high as my silicone walls and square as well. Try to make the mold as neat as you can. Now imagine someone else is going to cast with your mold and you would like, you would want to hand them a nice mold, wouldn't you? If you handed them a nasty looking mold, first of all, that would be embarrassing for you and you'd potentially injure whoever is, whoever is casting your sculpture for you because the mold is sharp and difficult to work with. So hand your mold maker a nice mold, he'll, he'll love you for it. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to pretty much the last step, which is to attach poles. In this case, aluminum armature wire, really thick aluminum armature wire. I usually use aluminum broomsticks, but I didn't have any around and I was kind of rushing and I didn't want to go and buy more. So I just grabbed some thick armature wire that I had and it will work fine. Anything that won't rust or rot will work very well here. If you use iron or metal that will rust, it will, it will essentially crack the plaster and it'll fall off and not support your mother mold anymore. And if you, if you use something that rots, it will obviously rot and, and crumble and disappear into nothing. I pre-cut and bend the wire to fit the mother mold and then I attach it with two layers of burlap. The poles serve to stiffen up the mother mold piece, ensuring that it doesn't flex which is something that can happen. And it gives me a place to attach bungee cords to. And I'll use bungee cords to, to tie the mold together when I cast in it, so. Then I do a little bit more rasping, again, thinking of whoever will cast in this mold. And I bungee tie the mold together to make sure that no piece is gonna fall off. Then I'll let the mold rest for a day before opening it. Plaster, while it's fresh, can be quite crumbly and it's good to let it sit for a day or two before applying a lot of force. It can also bend a little bit for that matter. Opening this mold went real easy because the mold was well planned out, so everything worked out well. I just used gentle force and take it very, very slow. Then we have to rasp to clean up the edges, but we've already seen that, so we'll speed through this part. Only step left is to cut the silicone off the figure. To do this, I use a very, very sharp knife and I cut very slowly, making sure not to put my, my hand in front of the knife, trying to follow the middle of the silicone wall that I built. It's fairly straightforward, so you can just watch it, see how I do it, take your time, make sure you don't cut yourself. Once the pieces are cut, you need to put them back in their plaster cradle. Silicone bends and can therefore become misshapen and not conform to your plaster mother mold if you leave it laying around. So I put the silicone right back into the mother mold cradle to make sure 
it doesn't bend or change on me. Sculpture looks a little sad after the devastation that just occurred, but luckily the sculpture is just waste now. This clay will be reused for another piece later on. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. There are several rewards, one of them being this very sculpture that you've seen me make the mold for today. So check it out, there is a link in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and share with your friends and family. It really helps me out reaching a bigger audience and growing the channel. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.